My name is Gil Losey, one of the founders of Team Losey, along with my wife and my son and Gary. Hi, I'm Gary Kies. I'm one of the original founders of Team Losi, and thanks to this gentleman right here. Pit Shop was originally the Rancho Mediterranean Skate Park. As time went on, we got involved in these RC cars, and in the back room of the skate park, we put in a little shop and sold stuff, you know, a little store. We sold RC stuff and all that. We'd have a driver meeting, and, and for a while, I, I ran the races on Wednesday night. We, we wore many hats, and we, those days we were trying to build the business. We have a driver's meeting, and I tell guys, look around, okay? There's 120 entries tonight. There's going to be five guys that can leave here saying, I won the AMA. Okay? If getting that trophy means that much to you, you might want to think about taking your card, going back up to the shop, and getting your money back. Go buy a trophy. But now if you want to have fun, right, let's go racing. My son was, Gil was really managing the shop. It was a, it was a little room, and we had a 4 by 8 piece of pegboard nailed to the wall and parts and stuff hanging on the pegboard. And, that was, and, and then we had a table and we had some cars sitting on the table and that was it. And then I bought a, a place called the Pit Shop. Well, it was a good way to start because it, it had a good history and all that, except that they never made any money. And uh, when I bought it, the guy owed a lot of money to a lot of people. And we figured, well, if we call it the ranch pit shop, we can tell everybody it's a new business with new people. And that's how we got the name, the ranch pit shop. I was getting ready to move back to Northern California, where I'm from, and um, happened to mention it to Gil. And Gil says, wait a minute. And he said, you need to come down here and, and work with us. We have a tremendous opportunity here. And, um, you know, I kind of looked did some soul searching and asked a few people that knew Gil or knew what he was involved with. And I figured, well, what the hell, you know, I'll, I'll move down here, I'll try it. I had relocated my family back to the Bay Area and I lived with you for, what, about six months? And saw this business and saw what the potential was. Losi started with a 64 tooth pitch gear, rather, 64 pitch spur gear that was needed for the off-road cars. And I'll never forget when Gil walked in and said, hey, guys, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars for a tool. What do you think? I said, I think you're crazy. You'll never get your money back. We got our money back in, what, two or three months? But that was, again, he could see what the demand was going to be. I couldn't. I learned an awful lot in those early days, an awful lot from this gentleman right here. We got involved in, in, in the Scorpion, the Cox car. We got to know the Cox people. We were buying all their stuff. They, their stuff was made by Kyosho. They got into financial trouble, okay, and couldn't pay Kyosho. And I needed parts and stuff because I was selling the cars, so I started buying the stuff direct from Kyosho. And as time went on, Cox didn't want to bring the cars or anything in anymore, so I started bringing them in. Now, here's a car that was brought into the country for two or three years. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever could do shit with it. Junior spent a month with it and started winning everything with it. So he started winning everything with it. We started selling a ton of them. I, I remember we were buying those things for like uh, 60 bucks and selling them for a hundred and a quarter or something. I mean, we were doing really good, you know. And uh, pretty soon we started selling those to all the dealers too. Anyway, so. That's how we really kind of got into the car business. Associated decided, Associated Electrics decided that they were going to build a 10 scale off-road car. 
they were making 12 scale cars then and, and eight scale on-road cars. So they came and met with us because since we, we really were the controlling factor in that whole industry at that time for 10 scale off-road cars. And we were small, but we were still the leader of what was going on. So they came to us and said, if, if you guys will help us, but us a little bit, Junior a lot, designed this car, what would you like for it? And I said, well, I'd like a, an additional discount. And the first year I want 3,000 cars. And those are, the, those are the exact numbers. I remember Mike, it was yesterday. I want 3,000 cars. They said, that's a lot of cars. I, don't, I, I want 3,000 cars. So we made a deal. Well, the car came out and it was really successful. The car was fair, okay, but it didn't break. And everything else you bought on the market, everything else on the market you had to buy parts for to keep running. I mean, and that car was pretty strong. Well, as time went on, we're not getting the cars we're supposed to get. We agreed on a discount, we agreed on a amount of cars. Well, we went and had lunch with them, Gary and I and Gil. We, we went and met with the principals that it, it associated. And they said, yeah, we did pr promise you that, but we're already giving you more than we're giving anybody else, and we don't think that's fair. I said, well, you thought it was fair when you made a deal with us. How come it's not fair now? Well, it just isn't. Things change. Well, I said, that's the way it's going to be? And he said, that's the way it's going to be. Gary and I and Gil walked out, and Gil says, to hell with those guys. Let's build our own car. And we started to. We used to have roundtable meetings every Wednesday, production meetings and whatnot. So everybody kind of was up to speed with what was going on in the whole company. And I felt very strong that everybody was part of what was going on. Right. And, and it was good. I mean, because if there was a problem in, in, in uh, manufacturing or in packaging or whatever, it didn't matter if there was a, a problem with people not paying their bills, it didn't matter. It's like, we all need to be aware of what, what the problems are and what, what, where the direction we were going in and how things were moving along, including tooling on cars and whatnot. And one of the, the it's infamous now, sayings that I've used for years that were uttered in that meeting room many a time was, I don't wanna hear why you can't get it done, I wanna know how you're going to get it done. Well, there's always a way to do it. When Clarence would come back from a vendor, and Clarence worked very closely with him because he had a world of experience in injection molding, you know, he'd come back and he'd have this little tree of parts and it would be like, this is the first shot of an arm or arms or whatever. And uh, I, Gil and I shared an office where we were almost back to back in those days. And I remember that Gil would take his top drawer and he'd open up his drawer and He'd pull out the chassis and the transmission, and it's like, okay, where does this go now? And little by little. And it's like, it was like a monumental deal. It was like celebration of a birth almost every other week. I think we did go out and celebrate. Oh, I think we did, a yeah. A lot of times. And it was like, Junior, come here. Chad, come here. Right? It's like, look, another piece. It's getting there. It's getting there. Um, and it was, I mean, it was, it was really exciting to be there. Uh, we had some difficult things. We had, you know, our, ch our chassis were made out of uh, graphite. And it always bothered me a lot because we could only ship as many cards as we could get graphite chassis. Yeah, so here I got some guy, problem. here I got some guy with a little shop in Florida controlling my business, which really pissed me off. Finally got everything working. The last part we had was a goddamn hold down for a battery. <laughs> I'll never forget it. We got all these t difficult, hard parts out of difficult materials, hard, you know, hard this, soft that, yeah. And we couldn't finish this goddamn battery strap thing. So we're getting ready. We're doing, we're trying to, we're getting these parts in little by little. Well, the original plan was to ship the first cars in September. Okay. Well, we're getting into November. And we haven't shipped a thing yet. We can't ship yet. But I bought all this inventory to build these cars, and I'm running out of money. Horizon had just started in business then. So I thought, Jesus, they're not going to be able to do it. I need some money. 
So I call Great Plains. I call Alan Green at Great Plains. I don't know if you know Alan or not, but a terrific guy. Very nice man. I call Alan Green. I said, Alan, how would you like to have the first thousand JRX twos? He said, what do I have to do to get them? I said, you have to pay for them now. Next morning, I had a check on my desk for 137,000 something dollars from Great Plains. Well, that helped us get through it, and, and we built the first thousand cars, and they went to Great Plains. They sold them all before we ever shipped another one. They sold them all in like two weeks. My job after that was deciding who we were going to ship it to every day. Yeah. I, I was trying to keep everybody happy. It was a tough job, but it was the best job I ever had in my life. I did that for like three or four years. I'd go there in the morning and I'd go, give me my list. And they'd give me the list of everything that everybody that wanted shit that day. And uh, I yeah, decided who, I'd allocate all the stuff, yeah. The JRX2 in the history, I think, of, of off-road was a milestone car. Because as Pop pointed out, besides the fact it was a dramatically new design that lent itself to non-prepared track surfaces, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. The five link really sucked up the bumps and made it very easy to drive. But it also included turnbuckles, quality NMB ball bearings, a lot of parts that you would normally have to go buy a car kit, because that's all there was in those days were kits. Then you'd have to buy a bearing kit and then, well, of course, you want to get this transmission gear, you know, and you want to get these turnbuckles from Thorpe. And, and the this. arms would break, you had to yeah. buy new arms. And, 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 you know, and all of a sudden, and so you kind of had to kind of re-kit or kit bash your model together. Mm -hmm. The JRX2 came out of the box, and there, everything was pretty much there. It was fun for me to go to a racetrack. And there were more racetracks then than now. There's a, I think there's a lot of better ones now, but there was a lot, a lot of them. And uh, to go into a, 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 a go, go, go into a, a racetrack and have some kids say to me, hey, last week I was in the C main, I bought one of your cars. I was in the A main, I, was in the, I, was, I qualified 10th the other day. That, was, that made me feel really, really good. We, we felt we built the first car you could put together out of the box and, and go compete with. Because any other car you bought, you buy it, then you had to buy a bunch of shit to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was our goal. I was getting tired. And you know, you, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but I was really getting tired of the, of the whole racer deal. You know, what happened is that these kids all started making some money. They all wanted more money. They were all asking for more money. And the companies were starting to fight over these guys. Well, I never liked that. Fortunately, we did have some guys that were very loyal. Yes, we were lucky. And uh, so even if, if, I mean, there were a couple guys, I just told go. A couple of really big time guys. But uh, we always had enough good drivers. I never felt like we had to win every race we went to. I just felt like we had to be competitive. They had to know we were there. So if some guy went there with one of our cars and finished the hundredth, he said, well, we had four cars in the A main, so those cars ain't too bad. Yeah, something like that. So that was part of it. I think it was just time for me to, to just, yeah.